All right, hey guys, I'm Brad U. It's been a long time since I have recorded an artcast type video. I'm in. Oh, I should have looked at my last one to see <laughs> even where I was, but I believe that I have not recorded a, any kind of a video in my new house yet. So we moved at the beginning of the year. It's now April. So we are. Yeah, we moved. We started moving in the day after Christmas. So we've been in this house over four months and I'm just now getting it figured out <clears throat> how to... I jimmied around with the, my uh, setup for a bit and I think that this will work. It actually might even be better than what I've had before. I've got a little light here. Um, my, my camera is very close to the drawing so I've just barely enough height to fit the marker and draw. Um, yeah, so should work out though. And hopefully if this does work, I'm a little concerned with the, what would this thing be called? The clamp sliding just due to gravity. It kind of seemed to want to, if I bumped it at all, it seemed to slide out of place. So I'm hoping that it holds as long as I don't bump it. Uh, anyway, Let's do this. This the nice thing. I'm I've got a drawing a desk set up. I'll post some pictures or something so you guys can see. I've got a desk set up, so this is a lot more sturdy than my drawing table from before. So I had a lot of shaking of the camera before, and it shouldn't do that now because it's all grounded. Um, it's not going to move if I bump the table and stuff like that. So that's a plus. I've been really wanting to do this for a long time, and it's just hard to, uh, <laughs> oh, I'll start drawing and get into the difficulties I'm having. All right, so this is Chocolate Al, former UFC superstar, one of the most popular fighters of all time, Chuck Liddell. Some little joke started where some kid said, Dad, why do they call this guy Chocolate Al? Chocolate Al. So that kind of became his nickname, and I think it's funny. His other nickname is the Iceman. You probably know this guy even if you don't watch fights. Ooh, I feel shaky. Too much caffeine. Try not to screw anything up. Um... So, as I just said, we moved at the beginning of the year, or at the end of the year, I guess. And I love the new house. We moved about a block away from our old house, which is pretty funny. It made for an interesting move. We literally sometimes walked things down the street to move, like something that would be like a, f a freezer, you know, really difficult to and awkward to load up in a truck and things like that so we just uh, we just put it up on a dolly and, and pushed it a block down the street and that's that should probably not don't want to go too dark right out of the gate but some of these spots are real nice and dark um, I've got a whole bunch of commissions lined up which is awesome kind of just going through them. Actually, I'm going to bless out and go a little lighter. Let's go way lighter and work up to the darks. Um, anyway, I want to get lost in thought. That's the fun, the fun thing. So, I, despite the fact that I haven't shot a video in a long time, I have been doing quite a bit of like brainstorming for ideas that I want to do. In terms of videos, I want to I, I want to make this a semi-regular thing, but it's really been tricky for me to even make drawing a semi-regular thing, quite honestly. So that's the struggle I'm having. Uh, but I want to do like one idea I have. If I can make this even a weekly, even if I do like a weekly video, um, I thought it'd be kind of a fun thing to to do not necessarily always talk art but just tell stories from my life not like i have all these adventure stories but just i don't know i thought it might be kind of fun if people got 
if I got a few regular viewers, listeners, to uh, just get a little insight into my life and, and my who I am. Like I think I did. Um, I feel like I talked wrestling one episode. I was doing a Abdullah the Butcher. Was that the one? Um, and I talked about my fascination with wrestling and my history of, you know, watching wrestling with my grandpa growing up. And so it doesn't have to be big stuff. Just, um, just telling some story. But I could tell stories about, you know, some of my friendships, or my relationships, or my also my art history. I did do kind of one of those. That was kind of fun. Um, I think that was a two-parter that I did. Like, you know, this is kind of taking you through the stages of my schooling and things like that. So that's obviously the most relevant because we're drawing here. But I've got like a, one, for instance, I definitely want to do an episode about my Billy Walton, who's a, um, a relative of mine. He passed away several years ago now, but he was a fascinating human being. And his stories deserve to be told. They're just awesome. Um, so anyway, that, that's one of the things I have kind of in my mind for moving forward and doing art casts and art videos, but I've, I also have bigger fish to fry in terms of art goals and that, the, the short, the long and short of it with that is I gotta find ways to make my um, make things work in my new lifestyle, staying home with two boys instead of one and still doing my artwork. That has been, that was a big enough difficulty with the one boy. Now I've got two, um, and they're great, but taking care of two boys, I just don't, I had a pretty good system. It took a long time for me to figure this one out too, but with Ty, when he was a bit baby or you know, toddler, still a toddler, but when Nori was going to work and I was staying home with Ty, eventually I finally got it figured out that I could take care of him during the day and then Nori would get home and we'd have a few hours of family time and then when they go to sleep, I'd get up and draw for few hours and I could draw till you know maybe 1 or 2 a.m. and get a good so that if everybody gets down by 10 let's say that gives me three four hours a night and then I could nap when Ty napped to catch up the next day I'm a guy who needs my sleep and that worked out pretty well um, once I got it down it worked out pretty well and and so that's great. And I thought this will be easy. Um, Nori's back to work, and that's all I got to do. Just just same old as before. I'll take a nap when the boys nap. I'll stay up late. <laughs> well, Trevor, he's five months now, maybe close to six. He doesn't get that nap time is for him is when Ty naps because that's when we're all gonna nap. Yeah, he doesn't get that. <laughs> he naps on his own schedule and it has not worked, I don't think, a single day yet where I've had time with both boys napping at once to do my own thing or to nap. Um, and also Trevor should be taking like, you know, two hour naps still. And he's just not. He's sleeping for like, I don't know, 15, 20, maybe a half hour. He, I don't recall him sleeping an hour even during the day. i got to get back into the swing of things. The, uh, the old drawing and talking thing is 
kind of tricky. I'm really doing this one evenly. At least I can see that. That's probably a good thing. Um, but it's not going to be the quickest way to do things because I just got to get back into the... Uh, wow, I can't find my words. Back into the... I got nothing. It comes, it, it, with time, you get used to it, and it kind of comes back naturally. But this is a battle I always had with drawing and talking is, you know, you get into what you're talking about, and you can't concentrate as much on the drawing. Look how shaky I am. I don't know why that is. I don't have any reason to be, other than caffeine, maybe. I had a fair amount of coffee, but that's normal. Um, I've always been that way a little bit, though. It's kind of funny for somebody who draws like this, to, whose specialty is to do tiny drawings. I do not and never have had a real steady hand, <laughs> so that's pretty funny. Um, that's not something new. I've always kind of known, like, when I get down to the, get down to it, I'm not that great at the minute details, but it still eventually works out most of the time. Okay. One nice thing about old Chocolate Al here is he has a very distinct look because of this mohawk. You can get away with a lot of inaccuracies and people will go, oh, that's Chocolate Al. Uh, so, let's see, art news. What do I even have to get caught up on? Um, I've, dropped, I've definitely dropped off my art output, as I said, and I'm just struggling to find the times to draw and stuff like that. But I still am doing things. I'm doing card sets occasionally. I'm trying to put that a little bit... Make that a little less prevalent and spend more time on commissions and on what I want to do and less time on card sets that pay only a few dollars a card. Uh, it's just not it's just not really worth it for the money. And and uh, for a long time I made it work because artist proof sales were good, but artist proof sales have definitely dropped off for me. And I, I don't think just for me, I think artist proof sales have taken a downgrade if you look on eBay at average sale prices I think it's kind of across the board that prices are down and yet uh, it's not like we get paid more per card to make up for that in fact if anything then it would work the other way because you know supply and demand. There's too many artists out there who are willing to do the work for so cheap and that that makes it super hard to negotiate because if I say well I was paid you know way more for the last set I did for you guys um, they go okay but we can get you know we can get the you were going to do X amount of cards, we can get those done by other artists for much, much cheaper. So, yeah, I can't blame them. Let's go a little darker on this shadow here. So anyway, my biggest art project I'm working on right now is this. This will, Potentially this card will go into my new, I have my old um, so I called it Series 2 MMA trading card set that's 114 cards. Um, and I've got plenty of art to do another MMA set. I'm looking at probably a 54 card set, definitely at least 36, and hopefully 72. And even still, I've got more artwork than that. Um, 
to put in, but I, you know, pr uh, printing costs are the issue. I've got to get it, have enough money to print them. Now I tried my own sort of Kickstarter type way to raise the money and did a little pre-sale on the MMA uh, trading card Facebook groups that I'm a part of. Is it going to be too much to go that dark here? I think I'm just going to do it. Contrast is good. So what I'm doing is trying to raise the money for printing. It's going to cost me at least $500 for printing, but I've raised at least that much. So that's good. So the money's there. Um, if I want to go with a larger set, I'll still have to raise some more money on, pre on a pre-sale. And the way I'm doing it is just sort of I'm tracking it on my own as opposed to through a Kickstarter. Um, but I'm jotting down who's paid for who's prepaid for a set, and who's paid what, and anybody who's buying basically MMA artwork from me right now is what I'm putting towards that. I'm calling that like my printing money. So I've raised over 500 that way selling either pre-sale of this coming set which I'm calling series six and I'll explain that uh, those are twenty five dollars on the pre-sale uh, series two the huge set that I just mentioned is only thirty bucks on the pre-sale that these are these prices are shipped in the US um, both for 50 shipped or commissions like this um, if it's an MMA commission I'm calling it like I said money to go towards that printing if it's not well I still need to make money for money's sake too so that's how I'm differentiating is all I just need to go darker in these shadows, I think, and keep, keep going forward with it. Um, so let's see. What else do I need to say about that? So I've got a couple printing places picked out. So I have my, I have things priced out at least generally. I'm going to do a promo card at a company I have not yet printed with before and that'll be my starting point and then I can see what their quality is like see if I really like it if I do I will get a price quote for the whole set from them because their prices the way they've got things priced out are for one card X amount of copies well if I'm doing 50 cards at least, X amount of copies, I gotta imagine that they're able to give me a better price break than individually pricing 50. And if not, then I won't use them. Um, so my other option would be to use the companies I've already used in the past, which is uh, makeplaincards.com is the one I would go with. Um, and it's a poker deck company, but I've done, you know, if you've got any of my cards in hand, you've seen them. I've done my other sets that way. I like them. I think they turned out nice. I think they're still collectible. I think people like them. So I'm down with that, with doing that again. So right now, so part of our, going back to the moving thing, well, yeah, let's just talk about moving for a second. Why would you move one block away? Well, we love our neighborhood, but my wife bought this house before we ever started dating. Her house, the previous house, I mean. So it was a one-person house. 
and then I came along and we started dating and there were two of us in the house and then we had Ty and there were three of us and now we got Trevor and there's four of us and it wasn't <laughs> it's a small house and I have a lot of stuff and Nori has a lot of stuff a lot of stuff and so we bought a house that's twice as big about a block away because we love the neighborhood uh, we did house shop for a couple months and went to a lot of open houses and that type of thing and it's funny this house we ended up buying is we literally walked, it was the second house we went through on the first day that we started going to open houses and it's like I said a block away from where we were living and at the time we weren't even considering it uh, there were a couple things about the house that were like felt like deal breakers like well we wouldn't want to live here because of this um, and it just it was just like you know let's take a look so we know what it's like to walk through a house and so we know what to compare it to and we did and it, you know we liked some things but like I said there were a couple deal breakers and so we didn't really consider it and we moved on and we looked at a bunch of other houses and some we liked some we didn't like and we even put a bid in on a house we were kind of excited about that because it would we would have been neighbors with one of Nori's good friends so it, and they've got a real cool like you know community based neighborhood lots of families with kids around the same age and so we would have like moved into this thing where we kind of would have already been set up with friends and new friends and stuff like that that would have been cool uh, but they really weren't willing to budge at all on their price which I, it's fine i can understand but the house needed a lot of work it needed like a new roof at 30 grand or whatever and so when they came back with a counter offer it basically was like okay well we'll take we would take your offer or whatever but then you have to buy the new roof on your own or something like that so it really wouldn't wasn't budging on their price at all if you look at it that way anyway that led us back to here we noticed this house block away is still on the market we couldn't believe it and we walked through again and we we're going, why didn't we like this? Like, well, my sticking point was, was kind of dumb um, when I think about it now. It's just a vision you have in your head of how you want things to be. Uh, we're on a slant. We're like three houses up from a fairly busy street. And I just thought, man, I want a house with a basketball hoop in front for the boys when they grow up. And you can't play basketball here the ball's going to roll down in Schwarber home run uh, the ball's going to roll down to the busy street is inevitable so I don't really want this house but when as we looked at more and more places it became evident to me that you know having a basketball hoop out front really isn't a deal breaker our kids are two and zero <laughs> right now so that's not the most important thing for them. Uh, now we have to be careful because of this. We are, like I said, like right down the street is a fairly busy street, so we got to be careful. But the price was right. The price had come down tremendously in, in the few months since we had looked at the house, or two months, I think, since we had looked at the house the first time. It was crazy. Honestly, it's nuts. I think that the sellers made a few poor decisions in in their strategy of selling the house that turned some people away, probably. And we just got lucky, too, I think, with timing. Um, the real part of the story that's interesting is there's this gal had showed us this house and the other one right in our neighborhood um 
and then when we started looking outside of our neighborhood there's a gal who was friends with the people that lived in that other neighborhood Nori's friends so Nori had met this girl but you know didn't know her outside of that and so she started showing us around to houses and she kind of was our uh, oh boy I feel like I'm making no progress I'm just uh, yeah, half hour in, not really getting anywhere. Um, but that's okay. I'm not in a rush. I just want to keep plugging away at it. So anyway, um, Nori goes and and contacts the gal who had showed us the first couple houses and our real estate agent house. <laughs> I was not finding that word. Um, and she goes, well, what do you know about that house on 208 that we first looked at? And she goes, I know everything about that house. Because in the last two months, I've been working with people who almost bought it, and at the last second, it fell through. And so that was like, she's like, well, you want to come take a second look? So, so she met us there that night. We looked at it again, everything looked good. She kind of was able to tell us even pretty much she had a good idea what the bottom line was for the sellers, what they were looking for, because the real estate agent for them was in her same firm. So so we really kind of got the inside scoop. And it was just crazy how nicely the whole thing worked out. And that was that. I think it was the next day we put in a bid. It was accepted, and boom. As far as buying a house goes, it's as smooth as it could possibly go. So that was awesome. And here we are, and we're we're all moved in. Oh, sorry, we're all moved in, uh, but we're still ooh, still organizing and things like that. I guess we're not all moved in. We've got about two maybe two truckloads of stuff that still needs to come over but boy we so we bought a house that was twice the size of our old house and it still filled up real quick um we just got to get rid of some stuff we have too much stuff that's all there is to it i have too much stuff i like to collect things I collect trading cards and a lot of toy things like miniature games it's a lot of it in vintage uh, action figures, G.I. Joe and Star Wars. And I want I don't want to get rid of that stuff, right? I want it for the boys when they're old enough to enjoy it. All, all the stuff I just mentioned is stuff I don't want to get rid of. But at the same time, some of it takes up a lot of space. My card collection, I've mostly gotten rid of anyway, except the stuff I really want to keep. Uh, so... But anyway, Nori also is a, she just gets a lot of stuff that's decorative. It's not necessarily functional stuff. Um, and, and so then she gets kind of attached. And at some point, we just really need to get organized and go, well, what are we keeping and what are we getting rid of? Because you can't keep it all. That actually might be closer to done than I thought. Maybe that's the problem. I mean, I know a lot more can be done, but when I stop and look at it, it's looking pretty Chuck-like, Iceman. Um, so I will tell you from my own point of view, personally, I am so, so much happier in this house. Um, we just didn't have room to do anything. I mean, I probably mentioned this on previous art casts, but if I wanted to draw over there by the end of the, us living there, I A, had to wait for everyone to go to sleep. And then I had to clear out a spot on the living room floor. Uh, just move, move toys and everything aside. And that's where I would draw. Uh, my drawing table wasn't even functional at that point. It was sort of blocked off. We just had stuff in the way 
and so my pastels I would just get all my pastel boxes out and if I was I was in a pastel mode towards the end there and I still am I want to get back to pastels but I haven't hardly done them at this house um, but anyway I now have my own art studio room I can't tell you how awesome that is I'm so pumped to have my own space Whoa, my stomach uh, to have my supplies and everything that is so rad so that's where I am and now I'm just trying to get back to normalcy so we've been so busy with raising the boys with moving with big family stuff Norin's dad passed away I guess we're probably a couple months out I was a couple months ago maybe over a month um, which was not totally unexpected but it's still horrible um, she was very close to her dad very devastated to lose him he wasn't young but he wasn't old um, he was, I think he was about 70 um, anyway so big and the move has been huge and now we have a renter in the other place he just has started sleeping there the last week or so so that's just being finalized let's see here and so at some point our, our lives will kind of get back to normal and slow down a little bit oh the other thing is Nori's mom went out of town for like they just came back we've seen them twice so they just came back a week or two ago so they were out of town doing their um, rock shows not like Rolling Stones rock but like like precious metals and rocks <laughs> they do rock shows they sell, sell rocks and minerals and some sort of tumbler thing that our jewelry maker thing goes with them. Anyway, let's see. Um, so yeah, big picture. I'm so much happier in this house than I was at the other house. And I liked the other house. It just wasn't big enough at at a point, right? And this is this is fantastic. I've got my own art studio. Each boy has their own bedroom though I think big picture we might put them in a room together um, right now Trevor's he doesn't really need a bedroom right he sleeps in our room and he um, so his bedroom right now is sort of a spare room we have grandmas or aunts and cousins stay every so often in fact right now grandma my mom grandma sally is over and she is watching the boys while i'm gone and it's like noon oh it's almost one um so i figured geez i'm gonna have to do it art cast it's gonna be awesome and as soon as i'm done with this card i'll go back and probably run out and get us some lunch or something I'm getting hungry. I heard my stomach growl a little bit ago. Uh, let's see. So things have just been busy, but I have to figure out how to get back to drawing more regularly. Because right now I pretty much only draw. If there's somebody else here helping to watch the boys during the day. So I've been having my mom come over once a week not quite once a week probably two to three times in a month that's good gives me at least a couple hours to draw during the day and then if she stays the night hey yeah, it's even better because that means i'm getting considerably more time i don't think she's going to stay the night tonight but i like that we have developed a pattern that that's something she can do and feels comfortable with. I think she wasn't so 
comfortable with it at first. And after doing it a couple times and making the drive over here a couple times, she's seen, oh, it's not that bad. And she gets so much better quality time with the boys. And it's not like she's totally on duty for, if let's say she stays a night, it's not like she's on duty for 24 hours babysitting. I mean, I'm right here. I told her right now that I'm doing a video, so if she can help <laughs> not bothering me, then that's great. I tried to get everything set up so she wouldn't need to ask any questions for an hour or so. But if she does, it's no big deal. You guys will just have to go on pause or I'll cut this early. I might not finish this one. It might, this goes back to, you know, something normal about doing art casts that I know from experience is at some point doing the final touches is just a lot easier if I don't have the camera rolling and I can actually focus in and look at what needs to be done. Um, but I feel like, just talking out loud, like there's so much I still need to do on this, but overall it still looks like it's coming along pretty well. Like even if I stopped right here, I think I'd be pretty happy with it. So I may not have that much more to do when I look at it that way. Oh man, there's my stomach again. So, let's see. Where does that put us? So I've got this one. I've got maybe five more MMA commissions. Let's see. Uh, Cyborg, a Randy Couture. Is there another one? Those are for the same guy that's getting this one. Um... So those are maybes in this, like this will go in my new set. I can say that pretty confidently looking at it. This will go in the set I'm working on. And then it just depends on if I'm able to come up with the money to get a larger set printed. I want to get, uh -oh, I want to do a, a print run of 100 sets. Uh, I'll do 50 if I have to, but... I really want to do 150. I run out so quick. Oh, the other thing I want to do with this set is I've been in talks with some fighters, and I want to get some autographs. And it's a fine line. It's a tricky one, and, I, and maybe I shouldn't even talk about this openly, but I'm going to because I already started to say it. It's tricky because theoretically a fighter could be angry. I could say, hey, will you sign some cards for me for my new trading card set and they'll be like I'm in a trading card set how come I'm not getting paid for it or whatever but the reality is if I had to pay every fighter who I'm drawing or putting in the set there's no way I could do it I'm trying to break even I'm trying to that's my goal the last set I did 114 cards I'm still I did that in 2012, I believe. I'd say I'm still $500 in the hole from just the printing. Um, so I'm just trying to make, make it worthwhile for me to do it. They're my business cards, but I also want them to be collectible. And, you know, I want people to think, hey, they're cool. And so if I can work out a deal with a fighter where, hey, if you sign 10 or 20 of these cards for me I'll get you some to keep or I don't know maybe even a whole set or I'll do some artwork for you or whatever I can do stuff like that and make it work um, pretty well um, but it, you know, like I said I don't want to open up a can of worms of contacting fighters and have them mad that I had drawn them or that I printed up a card of theirs and it, it kind of goes back to the fan art Comic-Con debate. I mean, it's a gray area of, of whether it's okay to do for me to do a drawing of Chuck Liddell. Um, 
I think most fighters, are, most celebrities in general, are big enough that they're just not going to worry about if somebody did a drawing of them. There's no sense going after somebody for that because they're doing it as a fan and they're, me doing a drawing of Chuck Liddell is promoting Chuck Liddell. It's not, it's, you know what I mean? It's not taking anything away from him. That's for sure. So I think that's kind of how most celebrities look at it. And most fighters are not massive celebrities. So in their cases, I think they would look at it the same. It's like, this is awesome. They're promoting me by doing my artwork. But I also want, I don't want anybody to be pissed off at me. I want people to think it's cool what I'm doing. And I want to be drawing fighters, you know. I wish I had my own comic book or whatever, but that's not the type of art I do. It just isn't. Um, I draw people and I draw what I see, not what's in my imagination. I know like if you talk to Will Terry, Will Terry's an artist I really respect. I mentioned him before. I like his videos. You know, but he'll talk about like the levels of fan art and mine is like the lowest. You know, if you just look at a picture and draw it, that's the lowest level. <laughs> it's way cooler. And I've done this stuff too. It's way cooler to to make it unique some way. So for instance, I did a sketch card one time of Pedro the Rock Hizo, but I made him look all rocky like he was make, made of stone or whatever. That's better. I get it. Artistically, that's more creative. Um, it didn't, it doesn't, that sort of thing doesn't turn out as nice as something like this, <laughs> generally. So, I do, I, I'm happy with what I do. I'm not unfulfilled in drawing people, just drawing from photographs. I'm happy with that. Some artists are not. Some artists look at this, like I said, as a low level of art. I don't. Um, and I don't think that this in any way takes away from the people that I'm drawing, the celebrities, whether it be a fighter or a movie star or whatever else. I think that it adds to them, that it promotes them and supports them, not takes away from them. So I'm happy with doing what I'm doing. But the topic I was that brought this up was getting fighters to sign autographs for me is a little tricky because I'm not saying oh, I'll pay you 10 bucks an autograph. I can't do that at all. Um, and I'm not necessarily going to go sell the autographs, but I'm going to sell them in the, in a way in that like one idea I have maybe is let's say I'm able to get, I've got three or four fighters on board who say they're interested, who will sign some stuff for me. Let's say I get 50 autographs total. Then I can say, Hey, the first 50, people to buy sets of this will get a one random autograph included in their set you know it helps promote me it helps um helps me sell more of them um so in that sense i'd be selling them but i'm not saying oh chuck liddell is gonna autograph 10 for me i'll sell you I'm selling each Chuck Liddell autograph for 20 bucks. That's not how I'm doing it. Um, is there a difference? I don't know. Seems to make more sense to me <laughs> the way I'm doing it than what I than what I described. Not everybody would see it that same way. And I get that. That's fine. I do know at one point, this is long ago, and I've probably told this story, uh, but at one point, the UFC contacted me. This is more, probably 2004 or 5-ish. So we're talking over 10 years ago. The UFC was much smaller back then. Um, somebody contacted me some, from the legal team at the UFC and said, you're drawing UFC fighters without permission. You need to pay us. I think what he said is you need to pay us for each UFC fighter you've drawn. You need to pay us a hundred dollars. I was like, well, I can't do that. <laughs> uh, and he looked and he goes, oh, I'm going to research this a little more and get back to you and see what we can work out. But I think it, 
at $100, you can ask it right to draw each drawing or whatever. Anyway, he contacted me a couple days later and said, never mind, Dana White says, leave you alone and let you do whatever you want. And I think that goes back to just what I said. Like, what I'm doing is not stealing from the UFC or the fighters. It's promoting the UFC and its fighters. And I think Dana White, and I've met Dana White. He didn't say much. Um, I showed him some of my cards. He wasn't like, oh, yeah, I've seen this or that. He just, he just said, oh, cool, thanks. I think I gave him a card probably. And that was way back then, too. That was, boy, when did I last go to Vegas for a UFC? Might have been, I know it was after that time because I remember thinking, uh, should I be worried about going up and talking to Dana White? And I met Joe Rogan then, too. And he did know who I was, which was awesome. <laughs> he goes, oh, yeah, you're Bradu. I go, cool, yeah. Yeah, I'm Bradu. Who are you? Just kidding. And Michael Buffer, he knew who I was. Or not Michael Buffer, Bruce Buffer. Bruce, the UFC one. Let's see, is that done? Done -ish. Oh, let's give it a little bit of a background. Let's see, let's go darker and darkest areas back here. Because I'm going to bring down a little. Just going to do a simple background. Should I go really dark? I mean, I don't think he has black eyes, but I bumped up the contrast a little on the photo. So some of these areas up here pretty black. And that kind of that contrast is what makes it look cool. So I don't wanna kinda wanna go for it. Let's give him a little bit more of a shadow under his nose there too. Like this, that's the one I'm looking for, yeah. So anyway, hopefully I can get into it, you know, this sort of thing, like doing an art cast, I'll get the video up or whatever, and then that'll help motivate me to want to get more done, get more videos and get them up and start to get people um, on board, get people watching and subscribing and stuff. If I can get back into those patterns, um, that's getting those balls rolling. It, it perpetuates more progress. Is that the way I'm trying to say it? Like those things can, the momentum can start and can pick up and get going pretty quick. Um, and like I said, I've never made it a huge deal to try and get a bunch of viewers, but if I could get normal videos out at, you know, more regular intervals, more consistently is what I mean. Um, you know, ideally I'd love to get like, I don't know, long-term, a long-term goal might be to start a Patreon to have enough viewers to... Um, you know, to be able to do some sort of a Patreon campaign. If you don't know what Patreon is, the short version, I don't know a ton about it, but short version is you'd pay a monthly subscription or pledge or whatever, and then you'd get bonus things. Like I know artists who have done, anybody who's pledging their Patreon gets put into a monthly drawing and a chance to win it original art. That's something I could see doing. Or they get access to exclusive videos. So some of their videos would go up on YouTube regular and some of them you'd have to uh, be following their or be a you know, subscriber of their Patreon to have access to. Um, I don't know that I want to do that, but you know, hey, if it meant some extra income. I mean, there are artists out there who make huge money from that. 
expect to be that, but geez, if I can make an extra 50 bucks a month because I have a few Patreon <laughs> subscribers, that'd be awesome. If I was going to do that, I'd have to be putting out at least weekly videos, probably, probably several a week. But like I said, that's just food for thought. Um, first step, I just want to get back to doing regular videos and regular art and get a get a um, pa God, I still can't find that word I'm looking for. Get back into a uh, rhythm. <laughs> get back into a uh, schedule of if I can have one day a week with a grandma helping out. It doesn't have to be my mom. It could be any of the grandmas. One day a week to make, you know, at least one day a work day. That would help. I also have been super tired lately. I've been having a hard time getting anything done at night. I've been needing to go to bed when everybody else goes to bed. And I don't really know why. Where am I at? Hey, I'm under an hour still. That's good. Hours usually kind of my goal. Um, maybe I should do a tutorial style one time too and not talk at all about, you know, BS stuff or storytelling or whatever and try and explain what I'm doing. I don't think there's any rocket science to what I'm doing, honestly. If you're watching me draw, I'm just trying to match the shapes of things and match the uh, values. And I'm too light in value, I can see that. Um, but that's okay, that's not a bad, not necessarily a bad thing. So let's do something where it's a little darker, kind of. Ooh. Let's see. Let's go darkish towards the top here. Again, not much of a science to this. I'm just going to try them. And I wanted to do a little dark. See that how light that is? But I think I won't go quite as dark there. Maybe we'll do a C3. Yes, even that's a little darker than maybe I need. But oh well. So for the other side, since it's already dark, I'm going to actually go less dark. So I hope you enjoyed tuning in. I'll finish up this background here um, and then probably call it good. And I feel even just figuring out a little setup and getting my camera perched in a way that I know I can draw now is one giant step towards making it a little easier to do another video. It's been a hurdle for me. But it didn't need to be, you know what I mean? It's like, I should have just done that a long time ago, but I've looked around the room and kind of gone, how am I going to do this? And I just decided today was a good day for it. smooth out. I like it. I don't want it to be perfectly smooth, but I want it to. It's a little bit blotchy and, um, and whatnot is fine there, but I also don't want it to just look messy. So let's try and get this to be a little bit more of an even gradation. That one, you, can you hear that? That means it's time to refill C2. Low on ink. It's all right, doesn't it? In it. Nothing fancy about that background, but it's classy. 
All right, let's check it out. I'm looking at it. I'm actually looking at the screen. Huh. Let's see here. Let's sign it and call it good. I might not have to do any more. Work on it after the camera goes off. After all. I love doing black and whites for that reason. That's not, there's a marker I wanted to look for. for oh, there it is. Um, I love doing black and whites for that reason. They just... I have the drawing skill, but that, that, that sounds totally like bragging. Well, uh, that I know I can do a pretty nice job on a black and white like this. If I had done this in color, like Misha's going to be color, if I had done it in color, it, I tend to get stuck going in circles sometimes trying to find the right colors. But even on an art cast, I feel confident that I can do A nice job on a black and white like this. Get a good likeness. Do it. I don't know. Iceman. Chocolate Al. Thanks for watching. I'm Bradu.